Hey everyone, Brian Beeler and Kevin O'Brien coming to you from the Storage Review Lab. And today we're messing around with some of the data protection features in Synology NAS units. Now we've got one sitting right here. What do we have here? 16 something? See, 1621 XS Plus. XS Plus. Is that the Intel or the AMD? It's I Intel <laughs> and it has, or yes, it's Intel and it has a uh, 10 gig on board. So that, I'm laughing because they also have a 1621 plus and we perpetually get confused. In fact, our Slack channels for about six months have been all jacked up because we got the two units confused. You guys don't care about that. The important part is that what we're going to do is a, a little bit of a walkthrough uh, on the uh, on the system and show you how the replication works, how snaps work, how we can protect data at a small office back to the home office or two small offices to each other or several small offices, uh, all sorts of different options when it comes to snapping the data. Yeah, and a lot of this comes with, uh, it's it's been a while since it was added, but uh, BTRFS uh, versus EXT4 that was on the older Synology, you can still pick one or the other, but BTRFS allows uh, you to do more advanced features like snapshots. And that is brought in and enables some of the features that we'll be working with today. Right, so any other setup before we just jump in? No, I mean, basic the uh, prerequisite is have a Synology. Right, and we happen to have matching Synology, so Kevin's got another 1621 XS Plus at home, but you don't have to. The only thing I guess you want to watch out for is capacity. Yeah, your um, destination needs to be same. Uh, you had to have enough uh, capacity on that destination location to support what you're going to want to do. Right, so if you set up something fancy, some hub and spoke deal where you're replicating, say, 12 grocery stores to a home office or whatever, you'll just want to make sure that the main one has got plenty of capacity to deal with all those snaps coming in. Yeah. And capacity is easy these days. This uh, We're using Iron Wolves for some of this testing, but eight, these 18 terabyte drives now... Uh, we've been lucky enough to have uh, a bunch of these around the office, and it sure makes the capacity argument a lot easier to manage, even yeah, with a yeah, relatively for this small NAS. Capacity-wise, you don't, uh, you're not replicating. Although you could, you're not replicating the entire volume. You pick and choose the folders uh, or shared folders that you want to uh, deal with, and you get, you can narrow in capacity on that. So you're not, you don't have to replicate everything. But you for, could, if, yes. depending on the protection you want, right? Yeah. Okay, let's take a look at this. We'll uh, jump into the uh, DSM. So we're logged in. What, what do we have going on? Well, where, where do we start? So we need to install this from the uh, package center, right? Yeah, so the um, uh, the features that you're going to be installing, you're going to look for the uh, snapshot replication service. And when you install that, it'll bring on the uh, replication service uh, along with it. Okay. Um, and then from there... As long as you have BTRFS set up as your volume type, you're good to go. Okay. And so we're going to look at, um, what are you going to do? You're going to grab a folder and replicate that to home? Yeah. So uh, here we have uh, some of the folders on our uh, NAS. And uh, this guy, I believe it's for NFS. We don't have protection policy on that set up yet. And okay. we can set one up. Uh, so for here, create a snapshot, a snapshot schedule. And you can do this. Um, one kicked off uh, every day of the week, and then you can narrow in the frequency from five minutes to every 12 hours. So if you're in a business that doesn't operate on the weekends, you could skip those days or have a uh, less exhaustive policy or something. Yeah, and it, uh, let's say one of those days you have a massive like uh, backup service hitting, and you want to make sure that that backup window doesn't have any other activity taking place, you can kind of match things up in that regard. Yeah, and we're going to take a look at the um, some of the backup service options as well. So we'll get into that in a future vid. Yeah, so here we're just going to uh, select some of the um, uh, default options. And um, we will have an initial snapshot. And we'll just call this guy first. Very technical. Yes. And now we go over to the... Um, uh, area where we can see the existing ISOs uh, folder that we have replicated right now, and then we can create a, a new one. And then from this remote guy, we're going to type in our super secret IP address of our uh, home location. Yeah. So, and we're we... we're chopping this out of the final video, so you pr you'll what, probably see a uh, blank in this. What guy. are you worried about? People trying to replicate to your uh, your home Synology? It probably hit my firewall ban list. You have one wrong entry, and you just get permanently banned. See, that's why I don't even bother with security at my home. I just let anyone in. 
So in here, uh, we collect, uh, we do a um, uh, encrypted uh, connection, and then the, on the advanced settings, uh, we have our uh, destination, and then we select and put in our information for the WAN IP address of our office location as well. Okay. And as long as you have your IPs and uh, port settings uh, correct, you click next, and it confirms things can talk both directions. And so the, the two systems are chit-chatting at the moment to make sure they can pass. Yes. And now we get to see the uh, host name of the destination location. It's going to go on volume one. We have 7.9 terabytes free. And from here, uh, we select the folder and send the data over immediately and uh, sync when completed. Right, so the first push is gonna be a little heavier because it's going to take the snap and then it, it's gotta maintain that initial data set and then future snaps and pushes should be quick and easy. Yeah, it really depends. Depending depend on your data change, right? Yeah, it's gonna all depend on what your uh, rate of change is and then also your upload connection. But it's pretty good at uh, narrowing in on uh, what your capabilities are. All right, so now you're looking at replication schedule. Yeah, and we can keep the, um, you can change a lot of the rules uh, depending on your specific needs, how many snapshots you want to retain. You can you can hold a lot of snapshots, but obviously uh, maybe you don't want to retain them that long or you're only, you only care about, like I want to meet, during a work week, I only care about an uh, one snapshot uh, per an hour and anything past day old, I don't care about at that point. Okay. And then you set your uh, time information and click apply. And one of the other things you can do too, in terms of strategy to set up replication is, this is very common, one system to another system, but you can pass these things down the line too. So we could replicate from here to your house and from your house to somewhere else too, in like a daisy chain. Uh, scenario. So they've got a lot of ways to, to make it work. Yeah, and uh, there is a way to uh, replicate from this to multiple hosts at the same time. So you don't have to, da you could da daisy chain, but yeah. you don't necessarily have to. So and from here, yep, we get to see that the uh, replication's in pro uh, progress. And uh, if we look down at the activity, we're going at about um, uh, 7.8 or 8 megabytes per second. Uh, sped up a little bit so a lot of this is going to depend on um, what the speed of your uplink is and obviously if you're trying to replicate a terabyte a day over a small uh, connection it's not going to work what's the uh, you know, we're seeing the indicator in the bottom right too on the io what's the hit on cpu or other resources so we can drill into that as well the resource manager works really well to uh, show what your uh, overall usage is as you can see i mean CPU utilization right now is 3% on this particular NAS. Uh, memory utilization didn't really change at all. Well, to be fair, we're not doing anything else on it. No one's, we're all in this room, so no one's accessing the files or anything at the moment. Yeah, but obviously there's, I mean, well, we are running surveillance stations. So if we look over on our okay, um, so we are doing LAN something. 2 side, uh, we're taking in streams and multiple cameras over H264. Uh, 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 so there is activity okay. hitting the NAS. All right. Uh, so overall, I mean, not a lot of impact. It's going to run off in the background, and as long as you're not running uh, like the most entry-level NAS that Synology offers, it's going to work pretty well. All right, so go back to the replication setup because one of the other things that's important, while that's this is running, the ISO's uh, job has been running for some time. Yeah, we get to see the uh, the activity in a mob data. I like uh, how set. they use the real system as the uh, the graphic. Yes, because it would probably look sad if you had like a single bay unit on one side. <laughs> they, want, they want you to see the, hard drive. the aspirational rack mount uh, Yeah, units. and as you can see, the original NAS that we had in our office was one of their uh, rack stations. So we call it SR Rack. But yes, it's you've never updated smaller. the names. And, you, no. and your home one is 1813, even yes. though this one that we're actually using is seven years newer. Okay. Yes. But overall, it, you get a lot of information. It's a fairly useful uh, tool. And you can do shared folders. You can do iSCSI LUNs. So take a look at the ISOs folder, too, because that one's been running a little while longer. Well, yeah, so this guy is completely um, uh, synchronized. OK. And um, so we get to see that uh, next runtime would be in eight hours. And to give you an idea of how well it works, we can go in and look how Look how brave you are. Yes. Well, I mean, 
there's not a lot of stuff in here that uh, we couldn't recover All right. again. So let's say we accidentally deleted a, oh, let's pick a smaller file. <laughs> Uh, we accidentally deleted this little power store uh, recovery uh, utility. I use that a lot. So we're going to go back in and on the recovery side, let's say we want to go back to a recent one, browse a snapshot, and we get to see this. So okay. We're able to easily drill into that snapshot and recover individual files. Yeah, that's pretty neat. So you don't have to recover the entire thing. You can pull in individual files first. Are you going to recover that one? Yeah. So we're going to copy that dude back into the ISOs folder. And off it goes. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty neat. I mean, it's a great way to, to fix mistakes and and obviously, file level, uh, file level granularity is an important thing because um, one small mistake of like a Word doc, you don't, you don't want to have to recover an entire folder that's 20 gigabytes or something. Um, so that's it's a fairly important thing, and you're able to right. drill into that level of granularity on per snapshot basis. Synology charges what for this package? Right now, zero. There's okay. no indication that it would be a um, uh, cost-based service. I know they had uh, some backup utilities in the past that uh, were for backing up uh, VMs or hosts that did have uh, licensing required initially, or didn't have it required initially, or maybe had changed. a trial service. Yeah. I think they but, came off of that. But this is entirely uh, free as long as you're using it on uh, Synology hardware. Yeah, so it's really easy to use as we saw just walking through the steps in this process and the use cases i think it's a good safety if you're running one of these in a small business if you're an accountant or a lawyer or you know whatever to have another one of these systems off site just to bounce your data to it's just a nice piece of you mind have two sites and you want to have shared folders and you want to keep things synchronized there's a good way to keep some between the multiple sites you know, some synergy some good keywords there. Yeah, and if you've got even um, personal assets like uh, your ISOs, your games, your And there are other backup videos. methods. So you, mm -hmm. if you want to do rsync or do a traditional backup or maybe you're not looking at uh, going through the data on your um, uh, destination side, but it's more for if a backup ever required be uh, recovered, it's there. So, I mean, there's different, depending on the, um, the level of use that you're looking for, there's different options. Yeah, so we're going to take a look at some of those in, in subsequent videos. But the point being with uh, the snapshot replication feature, it's a neat way to uh, add some data protection. If you've got access to a second Synology or even a friend Synology, you can replicate to each other's things. I mean, people do that with their family photos or whatever, right? Yeah, although uh, sometimes the uh, the traditional backup method might be preferred since you could password protect it. If you right. had a friend that you could put uh, use their sources of data location maybe you don't want them to look at like tax information or something you're backing up I don't trust any of my friends that was a terrible idea don't do that um, but uh, get a second one set it up it's free to use very easy to use and uh, certainly something worth exploring uh, especially for anyone that manages multiple uh, IT shops or IT orgs within uh, uh, a bigger infrastructure so we're pretty big fans Definitely check it out, and we'll be back soon with uh, another look at uh, more backup alternatives for NAS. Thanks.